Okay, so let's look at another example of normal and shear stress, and this is a past exam problem. It's worth 35 points, so this is a really good question to know how to answer. So we have the yoke and rod connection, and it is subjected to a tensile force of 15 kilonewtons. We have to determine the average normal stress in each rod and the average shear stress in pin A between the members. And then we have a part two, which asks, what happens to the shear stress in pin A if one side of the yoke is broken and the pin only passes through the yoke on one side instead of two? Okay, so the first thing that I started off with is finding the average stress, the normal average stress right here. So I cut this part right here, and we have the 15 kilonewtons pointing that way. And then that means that our normal force is going to be 15 kilonewtons pointing this way. So we know that average normal stress is force over area. So we have 15 kilonewtons divided by the area, and we're given a diameter of 50 millimeters. So I hope everybody knows how to do pi r squared. And we end up with 7.639 megapascals. Now, uh, something that is important to notice is units. A newton per meter squared is a pascal, and a megapascal is times 10 to the sixth. So it's really good to know um, what kind of units to use just to make things more simple. Now, we need to find the normal stress on the other side of the yoke. So once again, I just did 15 kilonewtons and then my normal stress by cutting this part right here was once again 15 kilonewtons and because they're both pointing out this is tensile so you know that it's going to be positive if it was compressive they would both be pointing inward and your average stress would be negative so we have 15 kilonewtons divided by the area and the only difference between this here and this is the fact that our diameters are um, different so normal force divided by pi r squared and that gives us 21.22 megapascals once again pretty simple but just pay attention to everything the little details the units you know okay so then we move on to finding the shear stress right here and that is caused by the pins so we have two pins one on this side right here and then we have another one that we can't see on the other side so we have two shear um, forces and because we have two shear forces we set those equal to our 15 kilonewtons and we get that V or each individual shear is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons so in our equation shear stress equation we use 7.5 kilonewtons divided by pi r squared and this area right here is the area of the pin itself so we use this 20 millimeter diameter and in the end we end up with 23.87 megapascals now the second part of the question asked us what would change if we had only one pin instead of two so if we had only one pin going through the yoke and we had no other pin on this side then that simply means that V is equal to 15 kilonewtons. And because 15 kilonewtons is our V, we plug it straight into our equation. The area remains the same. So if we have a bigger V compared to the one we had before, our shear stress actually doubles and it becomes bigger. So this is called single shear because we only have one shear force occurring at a single pin. The previous one right here is a double shear because we have two shear forces. We have two pins. And you it's possible to have more than two pins. You could have three, four. So you need to make uh, pay attention and find the correct V that you need to be using in your equation. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty pretty simple question, I would say, but it is a very good question for an exam.